Tension, as string makers like to talk about it, is the force along the length of the string. And that is measured between the nut and the bridge. And um, it's basically this length between here and here. It's commonly known as the playing length, playing length, or the vibrating length, because that's the part that vibrates the most. This tension is usually measured in um, pounds or kilograms. And uh, you know, it's, it's basically, it, you should be able to find most of this information online. So if you're curious about the tension in your string, um, either on the package of your string or online, you can usually find that. So why does tension matter, right? I just want to play my strings. Why do I care about tension, right? Well, it's really important in the mind of the string maker when we're putting together these strings because tension affects so much of our playing experience. There are four factors of string design. Two of them are pretty much set by the industry standards. One is the desired pitch, and the other is the desired length. So if we're going to make a full-size cello string, right, 4-4 four, four cello string, we're going to make an A, D, G, or C. We're not going to go and make like a B-flat string or a C-sharp string. We're going to make the industry-prescribed string and we're going to make it at the length of a 4-4 cello because those are pretty standardized. We're not going to make a great, great, great long string or teeny, teeny, weeny string, right? So those things are pretty much set. We can't mess around with them. But what we can change are the mass of the string and the tension of the string. These are where the string maker really can go kind of, you know, crazy and experiment. So if I have a string that vibrates at, say, uh, the string is a C, right? So say this, this string is vibrating at a C note, right? If I add mass to this string without changing anything else, if I make the string a bigger mass, what happens to the note that I hear? It goes down because I have a bigger mass here now vibrating, right? So the, like a, a bigger thing is going to make a lower pitch. Does that make sense? So all things the same then, what do I have to do with the tension to get it back up to the, the C pitch? Increase it, right. So, therefore, strings that have higher mass, if you want to achieve the same desired pitch and desired length, have higher tension. You'll have to put more tension into that string. Does that make sense? And conversely, a string, same desired pitch and desired length, if you want to take away the mass or reduce the tension, those two go in hand, hand in hand. So you'll reduce the mass and it'll automatically lower the amount of tension you, you need to get to the desired pitch. All right, so a couple other um, things about tension. The tension affects our playing experience um, kind of holistically because it changes a few things for us. Um, as string makers, we design medium tension to kind of arbitrarily <laughs> fit what we consider the majority of players. And that is, you know, it's, it's as uh, varied as that sounds. If we have a string that we feel is targeted towards this particular type of player, and that particular player likes this type of feel, that's the tension that we create that medium tension at. Um, so unfortunately, there's no real standardization between tensions. You, you can't be guaranteed that one medium tension is going to equal another medium tension in feel or actual tension measurement. So if we take a heavier tension version of that, um, what we get is because there's a little bit more mass on that string, it's moving more air. And by moving more air, you're actually creating more volume. So you actually get a bigger projection, more sound out of that string. So why wouldn't I always want to play really heavy tension strings, right? I want to be loud. What you sacrifice then are the lower dynamics, right? Because if it's a heavier mass, a bigger string, you have to put a higher minimum effort into moving the string. So you have to work harder. It's going to be a little bit harder to start with the bow. So if it's harder to start with the bow, it's harder for me to be subtle, right? I'm going to have to put a little bit more effort into it. I can't just be really gentle with it. So I am going to lose access to a real sort of the, the subtlety, the finesse, a little bit of the lower dynamic range. Um, conversely, a lighter tension string is probably going to give you a lot more access to that 
wider dynamic spectrum, especially the lower ones, and you can get a little bit more expressiveness out of it because you can be more subtle. It'll take you less effort to start that string up. The con, the, the, the con of playing a light tension string is that you do lose access to the higher volume projection. So you may not get the same ceiling as a medium or heavy tension string. Does that make sense? All right. So a couple other notes about tension. Um, as I mentioned, tension is not standardized um, between string makers or string types. So even within a string maker's catalog, there will be differences in medium tension from one type of string to another. Um, my suggestion is always to try the medium tension because, as I mentioned, it is sort of the design of it is to satisfy the most people, um, and then go from there. If you feel like you need a little bit uh, more resistance or more volume, go for a heavy, and vice versa. Um, the other thing to remember is that tension is not gauge. I get a lot of people saying, oh yeah, I play heavy gauge strings or I play light gauge strings. Gauge is a very direct um, diameter measurement. It's a physical measurement of the string. Um, that works when you're only talking about like an, a, a solid steel core E string that only has a piece of solid steel there. But once you start adding materials of different density on, on top of it and different core types, you, you start to throw that equation out the window because now you've got, um, you know, you might have a very high tension string that's very um, thin or you might have a very low tension string that's very thick. So tension uh, stops equaling gauge. Yeah? How, how much tolerance is there for variations in tension? For example, if you're tuning to 440 as against 400, mm -hmm. how much tolerance is there for, for the, I mean, when, when does the string snap? Uh, it depends on the core type. Most of that depends on how much um, tension the core type can take um, and how elastic it is. So while steel might be able to take a little bit more tension right up front. It also is not very elastic. So if you have a steel core string, it'll take a whole bunch more pressure, tension, sorry, and then it'll just snap. Like there'll be a point where it just won't, won't stretch anymore and then it'll go. If you have a really stretchy core, like an elastic um, a synthetic core, you can get a lot more stretch out of it, but it might, just, it, it might just lose its function at a certain point because it's just so stretched out, the core has like lost its integrity. So it really depends on the core type. Um, I don't know if that helps. Does that answer your question? Right. Any other questions on tension? A very last note on tension is that changing string tensions can often address other issues with your instrument or your, your uh, playing experience. Um, for instance, like if you have a, a bad wolf note on a cello or another instrument, um, wolf notes are very affected by the string tension that's on, on that instrument. So you can address it by lowering a string tension. You might not fix it 100%, but yeah. Hmm? Do you always have to have the same um, tension across all, all strings? And does one string tension affect the other strings? Uh, so the, to answer to your first question, do you always have to have the same tension across the strings? No, you don't, because every instrument is a little bit different. Sometimes people might have, for instance, um, a weak D string. Like they, their instrument just might have uh, not a lot of projection in that that, t that area. Um, so you, we might recommend trying a heavy tension just for that one string. Or, you know, vice versa, if you have like, you know, you have too much projection on one string, you might try a light, light tension. Um, to your second question, does... Oh, can one, like, can it change? One string yes. The sound of the other? Absolutely, yes. So we get this all the time where people say, I have a, tr uh, you know, a uh, problem with one string, like a G or whatever. And um, when they start changing out other strings, like an A or a D or E, it'll often change their experience with a G. A lot of that is with the instrument itself, but um, a significant portion of that actually is just the player feel. So if we're used to a relationship between an A and the D, like we're used to playing in a certain way between A and D, and a certain way from D and G, and we change the way that A relates to D, it will automatically change the way we relate D to G. It's very psychological, especially when we get to higher levels of playing because we're very instinctual when we play. We don't calculate, okay, I'm going to put, you know, three and a half percent more force into my D string when I cross. Oh, right, it's not, it's not a very um, mathematical process. We just play instinctually, and we are very good at adjusting to what we feel. Um, and so, yes, change, absolutely. Changing one tension of one string will absolutely affect your relation to, to almost uh, probably all four, uh, all three of the other strings. Any questions on tension? Anyone? Okay. 
maintenance. Oh, yes. Yeah. Are the solar strings a different tension to the regular? Like, sometimes. Sometimes. Um, each brand, each um, string maker and each brand of strings will be, um, you know, marketed towards something. <laughs> it's very, very hard to say that all things labeled solo are all higher tension. They may be a different winding type, they may be a different core type. Um, most likely, because it's very easy to change the tension for, for string makers, most likely there is a tension difference between strings that are marked non-solo and, and solo. Um, but yeah, there, there may be some other changes involved there as well. <laughs>